Thank you, thank you, and welcome back to the Feed My Sheep video channel. Today, uh, we're going to study in the Bible from, uh, first we're going to read a psalm, and then we're going to go where the Spirit of the Lord led me with our study today, which is into the book of Jeremiah, chapter 11. And uh, the word that I heard was broken promises. You know, when covenant is broken between God and man, those that have been called into his kingdom, and um, they've been first chosen, or called into God's kingdom and he's given them the Holy Spirit and they are so now they are vessels of the kingdom of heaven but they go about choosing to do their own will instead of the will of the Heavenly Father so that's what we're going to be studying today on the Bible study channel so we're going to start with uh, Psalm 52 and uh, this is a psalm that David uh, <clears throat> excuse me this is a psalm that David is saying because uh, Saul the Edomite is after him, and uh, there's an well, there's an Edomite called Dueg, okay, who actually told Saul that David was after him. I mean, he's told uh, the Edomite actually told David that Saul was after him. Let me make sure I have it correctly, and so uh, and that David was coming to where he was located, and so he was letting him know that he was coming so that they could try and set him up, basically, okay. And he was bragging about it. He was really um, boastful about the fact that he was coming to do this evil to this person that was a part of God's kingdom. Okay, again, because, uh, and Saul was also a part of God's kingdom. So, but still they were actually, both of them, they were uh, being used by the enemy, you could more or less say. And um, just to, go into a place of division, which a lot of times today that's happening in the kingdom. So maybe that's why the Holy Spirit even brought me to this particular passage. Okay, but because there was two, these, these are two kingdom people, David and Saul, and they're getting ready to fight against one another. And um, there's an individual that is an enemy to the, to the house of Israel to God, okay, the Edomite, who comes and who is actually the one that's instigating this this fight, okay. So anyway, David is saying the song, and he's saying, "Why boast thyself in mischief?" So he's asking, "Why are you know why is this person boasting about you know the evil that is you know that he's doing?" He said, "Thy tongue cleaves against uh, cleaves dis deceive and mischiefs like a sharp razor working deceitfully." For you love evil more than good, and lying rather than speaking righteous. So thou loves all devouring words, O thou deceitful tongue. So he's letting them know that they have a deceitful tongue because they love to devour people, condemn them, oppress them, and and uh, brag about the evil, and then do evil toward them, some any type of evil, and then brag about it. So he says, uh, God shall likewise destroy you forever. He shall take you away and pluck you out of thy dwelling place and root thee out of the land of the living. Now, this is what David is saying about Dueg, the enemy, the Edomite, okay, who actually came to give him advice about what Saul was getting ready and preparing to do toward David. But he was instigating the situation. He was the one bringing it, causing the reason for it. Okay, so let's go on to verse 6. It says, the righteous shall see, so see and fear and shall laugh at him. So God is saying that this particular person, God is going to deal with this deceitful person because he's causing division in the kingdom of God. And so he's going to, he sees it. He sees all of it and he's going to deal with it. So verse 7 says, lo, this is the man again, and this is giving us a description of what type of person this is. This is the man. Uh, that made not God his strength, but trusted in the abundance of his riches. And he strengthened himself in his own wickedness, okay? He made himself strong in what he was wicked in doing instead of uh, crying out to the Lord or calling on the Lord to make God him his strength. So then verse 8 says, but I am like a green olive tree. Now this is David saying this to the Lord because, <clears throat> again, a psalm is a prayer from David. A petition to the heavens 
So he says, but I am like a green olive tree in the house of God. I trust in the mercy of God forever and ever. And I will praise you forever and ever because thou hast done it. And I will wait on thy name for it is good before thy saints. So he's t- you know, putting in his petition unto the heavenly father that he will wait on you. Heavenly father, he was waiting on the Lord to move on his behalf where this uh, situation is occurring. But the reason for this psalm is verse 8, because it's going to take us over into another part of this study that we're going to go into where Jeremiah explains what it's like when there's a broken promise, okay? And basically, that's what's going on between these two. Psalm 52, between David and Saul, because God does never want us to... um, be in division against one another in the kingdom. If you are part of the God's kingdom, he never wants you to go against another kingdom person. If that person is wrong in any kind of way, you are to take that to the Lord in prayer and let God deal with that person. Because whenever you step in and you try to take over, it's like you try to become their God. You try to become the God of the situation and you're not. Because if there's two people that are saints, then you know the God of heaven handles that. Okay, whatever issue may arise between the two. I mean, even though it may look like something that should, um, <clears throat> excuse me, be taken to the courts here in the earth, you know, um, some, sometimes you just you just can't do it. You have to deal with them from the courts of heaven and let heaven deal with that person. Okay, so then we're going to go on over here to uh, the book of Jeremiah, where I was led, and it's Jeremiah chapter 11. I had this thing in here, and somehow it came out, but it's all right, I have to get back to it. (laughs) Okay, so it's Jeremiah chapter 11. And again, we're talking about broken covenant. When an individual, that is the purpose of this whole Bible study today, broken covenant. Whenever a person, the Heavenly Father has um, brought a person, an individual, into the kingdom of heaven, they've been baptized filled with the Holy Spirit. They've been born again of the Holy Spirit of heaven. Okay. They're heaven, heaven created. They are now a Holy Spirit filled being within the earth and they break covenant. They break their union with the heavenly father. You know, they break their covenant with God. And so that's what we're talking about today. And then how the heavenly father actually deals with situations like that. Okay. So Jeremiah uh, chapter 11 Jeremiah says, the word of the Lord came to me. Hear ye the words of this covenant and speak unto the men of Judah, the inhabitants of Jerusalem. So right here we can see he's getting ready to speak to the men of Judah, which the tribe of Judah was a part of the 12 tribes of Israel. Okay, always that's the, you know, that was the foundation of where they came from before God actually split them up. And, but they were, they're all still under the 12 tribes of Israel. So Judah and so he says, um, he says to for them to curse be the man that obeys not the words of this covenant. So the covenant being considered the Holy Spirit, the word, because again, in our last video, we talked about how the Holy Spirit was the covenant, new covenant, okay, created between God and man in the earth today. Okay. And in the Old Testament, it was an old covenant uh, where Moses came and he had all these different commandments that the Heavenly Father had given for the children of Israel to follow. And, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> they were to uh, continue on following, you know, Moses. And what Moses was saying, he was a leader at that time. Like Jesus Christ is our leader today. And we were supposed, you know, we're supposed to follow after what he's, you know, he's his commandments, what God sent him here to earth to tell us about. So um, that was basically what this is saying right here. It's speaking of, the old covenant and the new covenant and keeping the covenant. Well, in keeping the new covenant with the Holy Spirit, okay, this is what we're going to focus on right here, right now. Okay, because it says, I commanded your fathers in the day uh, that I brought them out forth out of the land of Egypt from the iron furnace saying, obey my voice, do them according, do and do them according to all which I command you. So shall my people and uh, be I'll, and I'll be your God if you just obey me and do what I, I said. 
And he says that I may perform the oath which I've sworn unto your fathers to give them a land flowing with milk and honey as it is this day. Then answered I and said, so be it, O Lord. I'm going to stop right here because I just want to go over that right there because he's saying right here that he would give them a land flowing with milk and honey. Now, this just gives us specific insight because, again, when you take notice to the Bible and the different things God is saying out of it, it also sets the standard to way to the way the world is really is today. OK, and so what is a, his plan in the earth today? OK, so it tells us right here. He's saying that he will give them. He said that I may perform the oath which I have sworn to your fathers to give them a land flowing with milk and honey. OK, so these fathers, forefathers, they were promised a land flowing with milk and honey. OK, so they were promised the land. OK, but again, these were people that were in covenant with God Almighty, the Heavenly Father. They weren't just some people that pull up on the land and because they noticed the land, they wanted to take the land. OK, and so they took the land and they did what they wanted to do on the land. That's not what that's not how God operates. God operates by his spirit. And um, these people at this particular time were his inheritance okay they were his people and he had purposed and plans for them to be partakers of the land to own the land okay that doesn't mean they had to purchase it but they owned it you can have okay giving you an example <clears throat> of what that means because you can have a person that has bought a piece of land let's say for a thousand dollars they built a fifty thousand dollar house on that land okay if they're doing something on that land, God does not like that they're doing on that land. The person whom God has predestined, purpose, and plan to be over that land can do something in that land, okay, to pull and uproot that, that house up off that land, okay? Because that is the original person of the, the, um, that actually has the ownership of that land, that the Heavenly Father has given ownership over the land. It's a different... It's a different type of uh, defining when you go and you talk about ownership of a land because then what man considers ownership of a land because man considers ownership of a land if you buy it, you purchase it, and you plant things on it. Well, God doesn't, that's not the type of ownership he's concerned with because he gave man the ideal to make money. He gave man the ideal to build the house on the land, okay? He gave man everything, okay? <laughs> so, you know, everybody, it's not, you know, it's just like what he says, not my will, but thy will and be done. And it's also like God is saying, his ways are not our ways. You know, his, we don't, the way man believes is not the same as what the way God is, okay? So going back, so I just wanted to explain that because there's a lot of confusion around that subject. And since it was just right here and the Holy Spirit brought it out to me when I was first reading this. So I thought I would just add it into the Bible study today because it's very important to understand that uh, and the difference between the two. OK, so verse six, going forward, uh, he says, then the Lord said unto me, proclaim all these words in the cities of Judah and in the streets. And tell them, hear ye the words of this covenant and do them. So he's telling them, he's telling um, Jeremiah, or God is telling Jeremiah to go and tell them, you know, that do my covenant, do what I'm telling you to do. He's telling them, begging them, basically. For I earnestly protested unto your fathers in the day that I brought them out of the land of Egypt. So he said, I've already been through this with your fathers. You know, trying to convince them and, you know, to understand my covenant and keep my laws and my regulations, you know, and how much more better it would be if they would just be obedient to me. Okay. Yet they obey not. Starts verse eight. Nor incline their ear, but walk everyone in the imagination of their evil heart. And so he says, therefore, I will bring upon them all the words of this covenant, which I commanded them to do, but they did them not. Okay. So this is what they did. They walked in the imagination of their evil heart. And that's what set them apart from God because we have to seek his will. That's why Jesus Christ even told us to pray, our heavenly father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, okay? Thy will be done. You know, and it's hard to... Um, 
Well, it's not as hard as people make it out to be, but it may seem hard if you're just learning the pathway, you know, and you're just learning about God. But as as you become more willing and obedient, you know, you will see things differently. Okay. So again, this is uh this is the Bible study I wanted to go over with you today, and it's about broken covenant, breaking the covenant between man and God. Because once you have the Holy Spirit, you know, the Heavenly Father expects us to abide in what he says that we are to abide in. Okay, so let me see. Which other verses did I want out there? Yeah, I found it. Okay, so then I'm going to keep going down here. And the Lord said unto me, verse 9, A conspiracy is found among the men of Judah and among the inhabitants of Jerusalem, for they are turned back to the iniquities of their forefathers, which refused to hear my words. Okay, so they're, now they're operating in the way of their fathers, how he, they used to act. Okay, and we all know it took them so long to come out of the wilderness. If you've ever read the story in the Old Testament, uh, it took them 40 years to even reach the point of where God was trying to re take them because of their disobedience and unwillingness to obey what Moses and Aaron was telling them to do. Okay, so, and going, uh, finishing verse 10, it says, they, they went after other gods to serve them. The house of Israel and the house of Judah have broken my covenant, which I made with their fathers. So, <clears throat> Again, um, this video was basically about broken covenants and how an individual can be born again, born into the kingdom of God. And if they do something outside of the will of God, outside of what God wants us to be doing, they break covenant. Okay, now when you talk about breaking covenant, you talk about defilement. That's what breaking covenant is also. It's the same thing as breaking, um, it's the same thing as defilement. Um, backsliding, you know, that's because you backslide. They say you backslide into your old way of thinking again and backslide into doing some things maybe that you used to do that God was against. Is that, or you backslide back into the way of thinking um, like you used to. So we want to basically stay focused on the Heavenly Father and his will and um, stay in covenant and stay obedient to what he is calling for us to do in this day, in this time, and in this season. So I thank everyone for joining me today on the uh, Feed My Sheep Foundation video channel. I look forward to studying with you again on our next uh, video. God bless you and have a wonderful day.